Hello all, I am Sanjit Mehra and I am here to present in front of you about the dynamic casting in C++. Basically C++ is a strongly typed language. We have a data types and data types are two types. One is the fundamental data types and another is a user defined data types. So the fundamental data types like integer, float, pointer types, I mean if you want to typecast between these fundamental these basic data types then a static cast works or an implicit cast works right so the for example you want to um, cast an integer to a float or a void pointer into some other pointer maybe integer pointer float pointer in that case the static casting works why because it's the sole responsibility of a programmer that what he is doing he is doing the right Right. So, uh, and steady casting is is uh, named because is named so why because it's done at the compile time, and uh, there is no runtime performance overhead uh, while doing the steady casting because it's already done when you compile your code. Now, dynamic cast is different in a sense that dynamic casting works. Or we as a programmer employs dynamic casting when you are working with polymorphic data types. Uh, with polymorphic data types, I mean uh, to a user defined data types which you define by a class. So you can of course uh, have a base class uh, and you can derive multiple, uh, you can have multiple derived class from those base class. So the base and the derived one, they become the polymorphic data types, right? And now when you want to, uh, you can say, uh, uh, you want to do a casting in between those two, uh, then that casting, we as a programmer, we should do with dynamic cast because dynamic cast uh, gives you the ability to check whether that casting is correct or not. Okay, and your programs run fines in case um, they, in case the casting is proper or not. So I'll take you with an example so that you understand it more better. So here we go. So let me have a one base data type, let's say class, um, let's say um, anything we can have journal. Let's say we have a generic or let's say class vehicle. And here we have, let's say we have, we make one function here, one method of vehicle, let's say void uh, start engine. Okay. And let's give me an empty implementation, uh, just a log for, just for uh, logging purpose. Okay. So let's say uh, it's a. Uh, empty implementation because we do not know what kind of vehicle it is and uh, so we are giving it an empty implementation here and then we have class let's say um let's say we make what we make a ship okay and we derive it with vehicle and so i'm making another type sheep ship here and uh, let me so let me make it a virtual because dynamic cast work with uh, polymorphic base types and uh, the virtual and, and and there should be one virtual function in the base type so that the virtual table is formed and uh, while doing the dynamic casting during the runtime it can look over the v table that is formed uh, by this virtual keyword and it can look up the uh, type safety and can check in properly and safely uh, tell the programmer whether it is safe to uh, downcast or not okay so we'll uh, see how it works basically so let me uh, override the same function here so i'm overriding start engine let me copy it from here and since we know how the engine starts so we see ship 
engine started and that's it and uh, let me give one let's say uh, specific implementation let me uh, give one more method let's say in the ship uh, start sailing so in the ship will sail so we can have one more log here ship engine ship sailing so that's it and so vehicle is my base type and ship is my derived type i have two user defined types here and uh, let me create one more type basically let me create it here so here let me do it as a car okay the start engine let's say it's car engine started uh, let me have it start uh, right or writing so here we can have car right okay so so i have created three types basically so one is vehicle ship and car and ship and car i have derived from a vehicle okay so now let me uh, create uh, an object of uh, say ship here so let me create an object here so new ship and let me have a base pointer here which is vehicle star vehicle like this so since the this is a polymorphic type i can have this uh, vehicle basically here because um, this is what uh, the polymorphism is okay now let me make one function in which uh, i'll downcast uh, uh, this um, this this uh, uh, data type to to a derived one okay so let me make one function which is uh, let's say test underscore downcast and here i have so let's say it's take the base pointer and here we would downcast to a ship let's say so let me have a void here and uh, let's say dynamic cast uh, the type would be ship and here the vehicle right so here now uh, I would have a ship pointer because I have so, so I'm dy dynamic casting or I'm down casting it to a ship data type and I'm taking it into a ship pointer now if this vehicle pointer is holding to that ship object it will successfully get type casted into uh, into a ship data type so if it's type cast it correctly so i can have if ship is equal equals to null so if it's not correct then it would give you a null pointer it would not be successful okay so we can write here see how uh, dynamic casting or you can say down casting uh to ship fail that means this vehicle pointer is not pointing to a shape object right so let me see here and in this else case we can write let's say to see out Down casting to ship success. Okay, like this and std and that, right? And here you could then call about let's say ship. You can call about start engine, and here you can call about ship. You can call about start sailing. Okay. 
So we know we know about that the ship uh, is dynamic uh, is is being casted successfully. That means vehicle is holding onto the ship object. So the it would not be null, and then you can fairly call <coughs> you can uh, call these methods on it while you after downcasting you can call this start sailing. Of course, you can call start engine on vehicle data type only. But since start sailing is specific to the ship, so we need it to downcast to a ship object so that I can call this function. So dynamic casting is helping me to ensure that I can safely downcast this into a ship object and then I can safely call the function start sailing. Okay. So of course I can uh, also since it's a um, you can say virtual function I can keep it here as well because uh, otherwise it would be called why because it's it's uh, over in function and so let me build it so it's building build succeeded and let me see what's the output here let me run it okay so actually i'm not calling it so let me call it again also so here i just pass the vehicle variable which is again a ship object so in function in this function we are not knowing that uh, what kind of variable uh, i mean uh, what kind of an object this vehicle could point to so in runtime now it is ensured that i'm making a ship object but in runtime there could be many scenarios in which this variable could hold to any of its derived types also and so we need the dynamic casting to ensure that it is a ship object so that we can call the specific functions for uh, that is uh, in in the ship class okay so now let me run it will succeeded and ship engine started which is this one downcasting to ship success which is then one and start sailing which is ship sailing so this is a thing basically and now if i if i remove this virtual function here then let's see what does it does does it successfully uh runs or not let me see so yeah so here vehicle is not polymorphic so we learned that and the build failed why because the dynamic casting is does not work on a type which is not polymorphic so this type the base type has to be polymorphic and that i can make it with defining it as virtual function okay so this is what we learned here so let's learn about this scenario also so let's say i uh, uh let's say in some runtime scenarios it could be not a ship object but a car okay now if i do it then if i run it this this time now so build succeeded and let it run now so we see it crashed here why because um uh, uh the ship is null here null here okay so it's null here so i should i should keep it of course you should uh, because this dynamic casting would return nil because the vehicle is not holding to a ship an object of ship type but now it is a car type so i should prevent this crash and i should have it here okay and now if i run it again so now the ship is nil here null here so downcasting to ship is failed and we are unable to downcast it to um, to uh, to the to the ship because this is holding to a car now i will make it to a car here and let's say it's a car object let it remain as a ship here and now if i build it so again start engine it was a polymorphic method but start sailing is not in the data type car so to remove the confusion i'll make this i will rename this variable as well 
now car does not have the start sailing it is start i think right thing yeah so now this would work okay now because this vehicle is holding to this car object and we are down casting it to it correctly right so let me run it now <coughs> so build succeeded downcasting to ship success car engine started and car right so this is the way in which you can handle it with uh, with downcasting now downcasting can also work with uh, with references also uh, I mean the polymorphism work with pointers and references in C++ so we can have a reference type also here and uh, and uh, we can um, also change it to a reference type here okay so we can do it here which is our references and in this case it would not be null because a reference type cannot be null so uh, uh so in this case it the dynamic casting throws an exception so we need to handle the exception scenarios here okay so we need to have a try catch block here so let me have a here, try and catch so we will put this into statement here which is this catch is i think the exception thrown is um std bad cast this is the exception and uh, we can have the exception here and uh, here we can print the exception std c out um uh, down cast fail uh, which is you can have exception dot what okay so it gives you the description of an exception here okay so we need to have a try catch block because now uh, it will throw an exception if it's not correct okay so we'll comment out this thing I mean we can remove it or we can comment it so now here uh, we have to pass the the reference type so we'll do it like this and uh, now let's see we run this program again so will succeeded uh, so let me have a, uh, so if if it's if it's if it's success then I need also to print out or I can call this method um, car start engine uh, sorry it should be car dot because it's now uh, what is the method here start in the car we have start engine So cannot use dot operator on a type. So it should be like this. So let me compile it again. okay so uh, the issue is here I should call it basically here right so it would work because the scope of this car is here and I was uh, declaring it uh, here so properly it should be like car dot start engine if it's success I mean if it's not success 
it will throw an exception and it will be caught here okay so now let me run it will succeed it let me run it and car engine started and let's say if it's not a car but let's say it is uh, it is a ship okay and now let's test whether our down car succeed or not so will succeed it and then cows fail and a steady bed cast is printed by e dot what because it's thrown an exception why because you can't downcast a ship to a car reference type okay so that's all friends about down downcasting the upcasting is simple the upcasting is whether you are you are you have got a not a not a base type but you have called a derived type and you are upcasting a derived type to a base type which is vehicle so in that case, I, in my opinion, we should not use dynamic cast, but we should use a static cast for upcasting. And I want to know from you why you should use a static cast from when you are upcasting and why not a dynamic cast. So the first reason is that, um, but before I tell you, you can pause a video and think about why, why, what are the two reasons why we upcast. And you can also um, think about uh, what uh, why the performance overhead is there in dynamic cast and not in static cast and so that's once one is the reason is that performance it does not have to look the v tables for the rtti information to for upcasting because upcasting we the programmers are very sure or we are very sure that whatever the derived class would be the base type would be same so when we are sh ensured that the base class has to be same why should we use a dynamic cast straight away we can use a static cast when you are upcasting to a base type because that's pretty sure that it would be correct so thank you all friends this is all from my side for today um, i had a good time explaining about this dynamic casting and static casting do subscribe like and tell me how you like this video i hope i have contributed something to your knowledge Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Meet you in the next video. Goodbye.